Okay, hi everybody. Uh, happy Monday. Um, at this point in our class, we should have completed that persuasive, you know, that persuasive, that um, research paper, right? Um, so you should have a draft in to me. I know not everybody does. You'll have some time today to work on it. If you don't, it's okay. Um, but um, the persuade, it's, I think it's called persuasive essay. I don't know why I call it that. It's a research essay. Anyway, that should be in. And that has three parts to it. What do you think should happen regarding your subject? Why do you think that should happen? Why is this a problem? And that should include some of the research that you did. And then finally, what should what is it that you want the reader to do? Okay? So that's where we should be. Now we're going to build something called a works cited. Another name for a works cited is a bibliography. Okay? You, those terms are interchangeable. Bibli, we have the L-I-O. Biblio means book. Graphy means writing. So a bibliography is a writing of books or a list of books. Okay? Um, that's what a work cited is. We are going to take all of the research that we have done and we're going to list it. And we do this for a couple of reasons. One, it builds our credibility, right? When the reader sees that list of research we've done, they're like, hey, they've done their research. They're not just making stuff up. Another thing this does is when we publish our work, other people might want to read it. And they might say, hey, I'm really interested in what you talked about here. I want to actually go read that article for myself. And this gives them a link to do that, if that makes sense. So this is like old school, it's not technically a hot link, but this is how we linked up different ideas and sources together back in my day before we had the internet. Okay, so you guys with me? That's the purpose of what we're doing. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do with me. I want you to go with me into Google Classroom and you will find an assignment called Works Cited. Let's go there together. You see it right under Unit 3 Research. I'm sorry, y'all. I told you everything itches. I, ugh, I hate it. Okay. And in this assignment, you're going to actually see a whole bunch of stuff, okay? We've got some examples. Um, we've got um, a link to the Purdue OWL. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to this bottom, I guess it's the third one, in, MLA 8th, 8th edition, the one that says works. Click that for me. And you'll see a page that looks like this. So when we build a work cited, you want to think of them, of each part as a container, right? And so you guys have seen those like nesting dolls, those Russian nesting dolls. Um, let me show you a picture of it just in case you haven't seen it. Eats right? Each doll goes inside of one that's a little bit larger than it. Okay, that's what we're doing with Work Cited. We are taking our article, that's the title of it, and we're putting it in the container of where it was published, the name of the newspaper or magazine, right? And then we're putting that in a larger example, and then we're putting that under the writer's name who might have written in a bunch of different things. So. I'm going to call them containers, and, and when I say the word container, that's what I mean, okay? So you've got the author who wrote it, you've got the title of the source, you've got the title of the container where it appears, that's the magazine or newspaper article, I mean magazine or newspaper. Um, did anybody else help write it? Does it have a version number? Does it have a publisher? What date was it published, okay? Did you find this by itself online, or did you use a different container like Gale Resources, which is what we did for our own, okay? All this stuff has to be documented in the work cited. Okay, are you guys with me? I'm hoping so. If you're not, I expect you to chime in and let me know. Okay, now I want you guys to look up the MLA 8th edition example. It's the very first document. This is what it's going to look like. No, that 
is not what it's going to look like. I am so sorry. I just did that. Okay. We want to do the one that says, nope, that's in text citations. That is not what it's going to look like. I was hoping I'd have something different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, click the Purdue Owl one. Okay, so when you click the Purdue Owl one, it's a link that takes you to um, Purdue University's online writing lab. Online writing lab, OWL, okay? And this website, remember it. You will use it throughout high school and for sure college if that's where you are headed, okay? Because it's a standardized way to um, to cite sources, this work cited is, and and the Purdue Writing Lab is kind of like the place everybody goes to figure out how to do it correctly. Okay, so this will be a tool that you'll use as long as you're doing academic writing. Okay, under here it's got all sorts of information for you. If you want to know what a work cited page actually looks like, you click sample work cited page, and here you go. You'll notice that we've got the author's name, the title of the um, article itself, where it was published, the date it was published, and then the link to it, right? Um, if it's um, a book or a, a movie, this one's a movie, you've got the title of the movie, who directed it, who released it, and what year it was released. Um, so this lists all the sources used in this one particular paper. Okay, but you might have other questions. Okay, so how do I format it if it's an electronic source? Like what if it's a tweet? What would that look like? Well, you can click electronic sources and come down and it'll tell you how to do a tweet. Okay, so why it keeps popping up like that. Um, it tells you how to do a page on a website, an ebook, um, an article in a web magazine, a scholarly journal, and an email itself, a listserv, a tweet, right there is how you would cite Twitter, okay? So it's got all the information that you need. Everybody's with me so far? Okay. Now what I want us to do is I want us to go to, back to our Google Classroom, and I want you to click the page that says Works Cited. It should pull up a Google Doc that looks like this, blank. All right, we are going to, I need to quickly make a copy for myself as soon as it comes up. Yeah. Give me just one second to do a copy. I'm not writing on the original. Okay. All right, so you guys should have this up. All right, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the typing. Okay. You do this with me right now, you will be done. Okay, and I'm going to delete it. It's gone. I want the title works cited. Oh my gosh, it's highlighted. So I'm going to highlight it again. You see this highlighter button up here, highlight color? I'm going to click that and make it say none. Your work cited should be written in Times New Roman, 12 point font. So to do that, I again highlighted my work, my words. I went to font. I want it to be Times New Roman. And I might have to scroll down a ways to get to Times New Roman, but there it is. I'm going to click it. And I want it to be 12 point font. So right here it needs to say 12. And I need this title centered. So this is where we have what we call alignment, and I want it centered in the page. So I'm going to click Center Align. And there I have work cited in the center of the page. Okay. When you've got that, when you've got work cited in the center of the page, I want you guys to type in the chat, me, or I've done it, I got it. That way I know where we are. Yay. Jakai is good. Eva's good. Ava, I'm so sorry. Ava's good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How about everybody else? Do you have work cited centered on your page? Come on, English 3. Let me know you're out there. Michaela, good. Francisco, nice. 
Yvette, Larry, Benjamin, Kiara, how about you guys? Angel, Roberto, Kimberly, let me know you're out there. Let me know you got this. Thank you, Roberto. Okay, great, good. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit enter. That's the only thing that I want in the center. So now I need to make it go back to the regular side, the left justified side. So I'm gonna click left align. And now my cursor is right where I need it to be, okay? All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the play A Raisin in the Sun because most of us were able to use that in our writing, or at least the students who had me first semester. So in order to do that, the very first thing I need is the name of the author. So I am going to look that up really quickly. Here we go. I've got A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, okay? So I am going to, her last name is Hansberry, H-A-N-S-B-E-R-R-Y. And so that's what I'm going to type in here, H-A-N-S-B-E-R-R-Y. And then her first name, L-O-R-R-A-I-N-N-E. Sorry, only one N. Okay, Lorraine Hansberry. And then I'm going to put a period after it. So we do author, last name, comma, first name, okay? Then I want to do a, um, I want to do a, um, the title of the work and it should be um, in quotation marks, where's my, there it is, okay? It's called a raisin in the sun, period, in quotation marks. Okay, let's see if I was able to do this. Okay, now I need to see where it was published. Full text, come on. Ooh, it doesn't tell me. Okay, so Raisin. Sorry, I'm waiting for the information to come up so we can see where it was published and when. Where did you get that? Oh, okay. 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 So Jakara has already. Jakaya. I don't know why I want there to be an R in your name so bad. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So I can't find what I'm looking for, but there we go. Raisin in the Sun Publisher. Okay, we'll look at this, just like she said. Okay, so here we go. Raisin in the Sun. Um, we've got... Okay, it was published in 1959. That is not what I want. I need is raisin in the sun text. Okay, what I want is the full text so I can show you guys the, here it is, okay. All right, so here's the full text of it and I need to come down and see when it was printed and this is going to be printed in 
1994, and who is it published by Vintage Books, which is a division of Random House. Okay, so now I'm going to put where it was published, and that gets put in italics. I believe I'm doing this right. Okay, yep. Okay, so vintage books, comma, 1994, period. And then I need to know what edition it is. So according to this, it is the first edition. So I'm going to put that here. All right, I don't want that italic. First edition, 1994. Okay. Okay. All right. Next thing I need to do is I need to make this all double spaced. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go to format. I'm going to go to line spacing and I'm going to make it double. So one more time, I selected everything, format, line spacing, double. Okay. You cannot see what I'm doing. Okay, so sorry. I'm going to highlight everything, format, line spacing, double. Okay, then when I hit enter, I'm ready for my next entry, okay? All right, so for your next entry, um, we need to do the um, article that you guys picked from the PowerPoint that we did, the article that I assigned you, right? Okay, so let's look back at that. How's everybody doing out there? Are we good? Okay. You guys let me know if you're not good. Okay, so to do this, we're going to go to research part one, your classwork. All right, which research did you pick? I picked, for us, when we did it, we did this YouTube video on fair housing law. Okay, so when we click that, it's me here. It needs to be for demo. Jamal's a boy who lives in a poor neighborhood. He has a friend named Kevin who lives in a wealthy Okay. Okay. So we have this video. Um, and what we need to do is we need to find, I need to go to Purdue Owl. Okay. And I'm looking up YouTube video. I don't know why that keeps coming. Okay. So I am looking up MLA electronic sources. And under electronic sources, I am looking for YouTube. YouTube video. Okay. So we would, for the YouTube video, do the author's last name then the title of the video, then YouTube, when it was uploaded and who it was uploaded by, and then we'll include a link to it, all right? So our video is right here and we need to know who did it. And that might be at the very end, so we'll check and see. Witten produced and animated by Alex Sakaya. 
probably saying his last name wrong, okay? But C-E-Q-U-E-A. So come with me into our works cited. C-E-Q-U-E-A, Alex. And then we need the title of the video, which is Systematic Racism Explained. Okay, once we have that, I'm going back to my Purdue out. And the next thing I need is I need the words YouTube, the Y and T are capitalized, and that is in italics, comma, and then followed by who it was uploaded by. So I'm going to do in italics, YouTube, comma, uploaded, sorry. I uploaded by, and I'm going to have to go to YouTube to figure that out. It was uploaded by act.tv. Okay. Okay, then going back to how do I do this? Uploaded by that, comma, then the date. And notice how they do the date. They do the number, the month, and then the year, comma. So I need to find the date it was uploaded. I'm going to come back here. It was uploaded April 16th, 2019. Comma, 16 April, 2019. And then I believe the next thing they have is the actual link. I am correct, they have the actual link, so I need to go to YouTube, I need to copy the link, and I need to paste it. Okay. One thing I noticed is that April is abbreviated, so it's APR. Okay, you guys with me? All right. There's one more thing I have to do. If you look at the Works Cited page, you see how it's got this weird indentation going on? It's like backwards, right? Normally, the first line of the paragraph is indented in, and this time, the first line isn't indented, but everything else is. It's called a hanging indent. Here's how you do that. You're going to highlight the entry that you want to have the hanging indent. You're going to go to Format. You're going to go to Align and Indent. Come all the way down to Indentation Options, where it says Special Indent. Click Hanging, click Apply, and there you go. I'll do that with you one more time. You highlight the entry, go to Format, go to Align and Indent. All the way down to the bottom where it says Indentation Options, and then you'll see special indent. You have none, first line, or hanging. You want to pick hanging indent and click apply, and it will do the hanging indent for you. Put a period at the end, and you are done. Okay, what does that leave you with? You have to do the own your own article that you got off Gale Resources. Okay, so you'll have to find that article. How would you cite that article? Well, that article is going to look like it's going to be a periodical because it's an article. So I'm in Purdue Al and I'm doing a periodical. It's an article in a magazine or a newspaper. I'm not quite sure where you got it, but it's got all different ones here. Okay. And then it'll tell you exactly how to cite that. So you have to do your own article, and then you have to finish writing that persuasive essay if you haven't finished it writing it yet, okay? But your work cited should have three entries in it. It should have the one, 
So it should have Raisin in the Sun, the one I gave you, and then the one um, from that you got off Gale Resources. If you did a source that wasn't the video, um, let me know and I can walk you through how to do that one. If you have any questions, you can let me know and I can walk you through how to do this. But your goal today is to finish the work cited with your one more source and then to finish writing your essay. But wait, there's one more thing we have to talk about. Go to our classroom and you'll see something that says writing one. We have to do our telepass writing, which you may have already started doing in other classes. Everybody has to do it. Let me talk about telepass for just a minute. The star test, you guys know, measures content knowledge, right? How well do you know algebra? How well do you know biology? How well do you know the elements of persuasive writing in English? Telepass measures your English communication ability. How well can you communicate using the English language? That's all this is. I'm just checking to see how well you use English. So you want to use your best English writing on this, okay? This prompt is measuring how well you can use the past tense. This is not a pass-fail. You're not getting a grade from this for me other than a completion grade, okay? The state just needs to look and see at this point in your high school career, how well can you use past tense in your writing? So here's the topic I picked. If you are looking, it says, tell me about a time when you had to tell someone something they did not want to hear. Okay? So I feel certain you've had that experience where you've had to tell somebody something that they didn't want to hear. I failed a class. I, we got a breakup. Um, I broke your favorite picture. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Um, I am sorry to tell you this, but that looks, that outfit looks terrible on you. I don't know. Um, but you had to tell somebody something they didn't want to hear, okay? Don't stress about what it is you're writing. I'm just looking to see if you've got past tense, okay? Um, all right. It's a PDF, which I've had students have trouble with all day. It was, I was told this would work and it didn't. Feel free to use it in Cami or make it into a Google Doc and write on Google Doc. It doesn't matter to me as long as it gets turned in. How long should it be? I don't care. It needs to be a complete story about a time, right? I'm guessing probably a half a page. I mean, it, it could be longer. Um, it could be shorter. I'm looking for a complete story. If I don't get a complete story, I'll kick it back and say you need to write more. Okay, so definitely... It's got to be enough to show me that you know how to write in English using past tense. Okay, so that's what we're doing. I need your telepath. I need your work cited finished. And if you haven't finished the essay, you need to do that as well. Sound good? Okay, I'm still here if you've got questions. Alden, let me know if you need me to catch you up or if you were able to get what we had to do.